Hey my friend, welcome to Joey Stick. In this video, you will learn the bucket sort algorithm. I'm going to tell you how it works, its time complexity, and how to implement the bucket sort algorithm in a Java program. But before that, I want you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on these videos I create for you. And also go through my sorting algorithms playlist in which you are going to find videos on 10 important sorting algorithms like heap sort, quick sort, merge sort and insertion sort. Now let's jump on to understanding the bucket sort algorithm. All right, so let me tell you when we use the bucket sort algorithm. So the bucket sort algorithm is used when the given input array has items that are uniformly distributed over a range. For example, if you are given an array that has floating point numbers ranging from 0 to 1, such as these. If you have an array like these containing floating point numbers, then bucket sort is one sorting candidate that can sort this array in linear time. And how the bucket sort algorithm works? It divides the unsorted array elements into several groups known as buckets. Now each bucket is then sorted using any of the sorted algorithms. You can use bubble sort, insertion sort, quick sort or mud sort. Or you can simply recursively apply the same bucket sort algorithm to each of the buckets. Finally, the sorted buckets are combined to produce the sorted array. And this is how the bucket sort algorithm works. All right, so this is the problem array that we are going to sort using the bucket sort algorithm. So the first step is going to be creating the buckets as we want to divide the unsorted array elements into buckets. But the question is, how many buckets are we going to create? One simple way is to create as many buckets as there are items in the array. So here, we have seven items. Therefore, we are going to create seven buckets. The integers here represent the indexes of each of these buckets. The next step is to insert the elements from this array into these buckets. But how we are going to do that? So let's start from this element, the first element of the problem array. So the algo is going to pick this value 0.43 and it is going to multiply it by n. What does n represent? the number of items of this array. And what is the number of items? It's seven. So the algo is going to calculate the multiplication of 0.43 and seven. Let's do that. 0.43 multiplied by seven. It gives 3.01. The algo is now going to convert this 3.01 into an integer. So when it is going to convert this number into an integer, it's going to get three only. So what it's going to do, it's going to insert 0.43 into the bucket, which is at index three. So let's do that. It will be 0.43 inside the bucket at index three. Now we move to the next element, which is 0.32. If we multiply it by seven, then we are going to get 2.24. The algo is going to convert uh, this floating point number into an integer and it's going to get two. So we are going to insert 0.32 into the bucket at index 2. The algo is now going to move to this element. That means the third element of the problem array. Here we have 0.23. So it's going to multiply 0.23 with 7. And the result that it's going to get will be 1.61. So what the algo is going to do, it's going to insert 0.23 into the bucket at index one. The algo is now going to move to element four or the element at index three of the problem array. Here, the value is 0.52. It's going to multiply 0.52 with seven and it's going to get 3.64. It will convert it into an integer. It's going to get three. So it's going to insert 0.52 into the bucket at index three. All right. So let me insert 0.52 like this. Now the algo is going to move to the next element where the value is 0.25. It's going to multiply 0.25 with seven. It's going to get 1.75. So it will insert 0.25 into the bucket at index one. The algo is now going to move to the second last element. Here the value is 0.47. It will multiply 0.47 with what? 7. It's going to get 
what it's going to do it's going to insert 0.47 into the bucket at index 3 again now the algo is going to move to the last element here the value is 0.51 it's going to multiply 0.51 with 7 it will get 3.57 and again it's going to insert 0.51 into the bucket at index 3 all right so the algorithm has traversed the entire problem array and you can see it has placed the unsorted elements into three buckets now the next step will be to sort these buckets using any of the sorting algorithms so let's quickly sort the elements in each of these buckets the algorithm is going to start from this bucket and it is going to find that the elements are already sorted so it's going to move to this bucket here there is only one element so no need to sort it and it's going to move to the fourth bucket at index 3 over here there are four elements and yes there is a need to sort these elements so let's quickly sort them so after 0.43 it will be 0.47 after 0.4 7 it will be 0.51 and after 0.51 it will be 0.52 all right the elements in each of these buckets are sorted all right the algo will perform the next step of combining the elements present in these sorted buckets so it's going to start from this bucket here the first element is 0.23 so it's going to pick 0.23 from here from this bucket and it's going to place it in the first item of the output array and at the same time it's going to eliminate the element from here now it's going to move to the second element of the sorted bucket the bucket at index one and it's going to pick this particular floating point number which is 0.25 and it's going to place it into the second element of the output array like this and uh, of course the floating point number will be erased then the algorithm is going to move to the next bucket and it has one floating point number only or one element only which is 0.32 it's going to pick it up and it's going to place it into the third cell of the output array like this let me eliminate this from here and then it's going to go to the final populated bucket it's going to first pick 0.43 and it's going to place it over here in the fourth cell then it's going to pick up 0.47 from here and it's going to place it over here in the fifth cell like this and then it will pick up 0.51 from here and it's going to place it in the sixth cell like this and finally it's going to pick up the last element which is 0.52 and it's going to place it in the last cell of the output array by the way, for demonstration purposes, I have created a separate output array. When we are going to write the Java program, we are going to place the elements from these sorted buckets back in the input array. All right. And there you go. You see that the array has been sorted using the bucket sort algorithm. All right. So let's implement the bucket sort algorithm in Java. So let's first create the main function. And now let's declare the array of type float so it will be float the name of the array let it be arr and let me quickly initialize it to have these floating point numbers all right there you go the array is initialized now i'm going to create an object of this bucket sort class so it will be bucket sort ps equals to new bucket sort okay object created now i'm going to call the bucket sort function so it will be bs dot bucket sort it's going to show red because i haven't defined the function yet but let me pass the parameters now only so the first parameter will be array itself and the second parameter will be its size all right now let me write the code to print the sorted array so it will be system dot out dot println let me write a label it will be sorted array and then i'll write another system dot out dot println and this time i'm going to use arrays class to string method to print my array which is arr okay now let's define the bucket sort function 
so it will be void bucket short and there will be two parameters number one will be the float array i am going to name it as array only and the second one will be the size let it be n okay the first thing that we are going to do is put a check over here that if n is less than equals to zero we are going to stop the execution of the bucket sort function that means if the length of the array is less than or equal to zero then there is no use of proceeding ahead so i'm going to write if within brackets n is less than equals to zero and i'll write return okay now we need to create buckets and you already have seen that we inserted floating point numbers into buckets so there is a need to create a 2d array over here a row and column type data structure so we create an array of array lists of type float of size n let's do that so it will be array list type will be float square brackets let's name it buckets equals to new array list size n okay so buckets here is an array of array lists of size n if you visualize it in tabular format then it will have n number of rows the number of columns will be derived at runtime only because we don't know yet how many floating point numbers how many of these floating point numbers will be inserted into which all buckets so we'll be creating empty buckets that means at each item of this array of array lists we'll be initializing a new array list all right so we are going to start a for loop that is going to start from index 0 and is going to end at the last index of the array the buckets array so it will be for int i equals to 0 i less than n i increment operator and at every item of this buckets array which will be denoted by buckets within square brackets i it's going to initialize a new array list of type float so it will be new array list type will obviously be float okay now we'll write the code to add elements into these buckets so we'll have to start a for loop again that is going to run the length of the array so it will be for int i equals to zero i less than n i increment operator okay now we'll write the code to calculate the index of the bucket in which we'll be inserting a particular element so i'm going to declare an integer variable it will be bucket idx equals to and what did we do we picked the elements from this array and multiplied them by seven seven was the number of items in this array here the number of items is represented by n so what we are going to do we will write arr within square brackets i multiplied by n obviously okay the next thing we did after multiplying any of these floating numbers with seven we converted the result into an integer so let's do that over here all right so the code to calculate the index of the bucket in which we'll be inserting a particular element has been written now let's write the code to actually insert the elements into the buckets so it will be buckets which is the array of the array lists within square brackets it will be bucket idx dot add within brackets it will be the array item all right now the next step will be to sort the elements in each of these buckets that means to sort the array list present at each of the items of the buckets array to do that we are going to make use of the sort method of the java.util.collections class so let me import it first when we import java.util.collections all right now i am going to write a for loop that is going to run the length of the buckets array so it will be for int i equals to zero i less than n again and i increment operator okay and within the for loop we'll be writing collections dot sort buckets within square brackets i this line of code 
is going to sort each of the buckets actually the elements in each of the buckets now the next step will be to get the sorted elements from each of the buckets back into the input array so yes we'll be using nested loops the outer loop will run over each of the buckets and the inner loop will be responsible for getting the elements out from each of the buckets and yes we'll be needing an index variable as well so let me declare and initialize it first we are going to initialize it to zero then let me write out outer loop so it will start from zero it's going to run the length of the buckets array so it will be i less than n again i increment operator all right now let's write the inner loop so it will be for and there will be a different variable this time it will be j it's going to start from zero and it's going to run the length of the array list present at each of the items of the buckets array that means it's going to run the length of each of the buckets or run the size of each of the buckets so it will be j less than buckets within square brackets i dot size all right and it will be j increment operator afterwards all right now let's write the code to get a particular element from a bucket and insert it into a particular index of the input array so it will be arr within brackets index equals to buckets within square brackets i dot get within brackets j all right and in the next line of code we are going to increment the index like this all right the program is complete let's run it to check if it is able to sort the array or not and there you go you can see that the array has been sorted now let me change a number let me change a number instead of 0.47 let me give 7 3 and run the program again there you go it's doing the job just fine and with this program we have successfully implemented the bucket sort algorithm in java speaking of the time complexity of the bucket sort algorithm it is big o n plus k where n is the number of elements and k is the number of buckets with this we have come to the end of this video i hope you enjoyed learning the bucket sort algorithm from joystick i'll see you in the next video of joystick till then stay tuned to my channel goodbye and take very good care of yourself.